Yo, how's it going everyone? I hope everyone's doing really well and I hope you've managed to, by this stage, reach the max level of the first stage for Duelist Cup. If you haven't already, I think you've got a little bit of time left. I think you've got until the 27th if I'm not mistaken, so you've got a little bit of time until then. But this is more for the players that have reached it and in preparation for the second round. So if you didn't know what the second round is, it's basically a point grind. So the faster you win games, obviously the more points you're going to achieve and the further up the ladder that you're going to climb in the Duelist Cup. So Decks like Kashtira and Purely will fend off better than Mathmech because Mathmech's combo is very long going first and also going second it is quite considerably long because we have to do a lot of extensions into getting into our you know towers and boss monsters to, to shoot for game essentially. So it is quite long for us. Whereas Kashtira and Purely, so for Kashtira they've got a Rise Heart. A Rise Heart being such a floodgate monster, if you don't have the natural out, a lot of players, including myself, you just scoop because it's very hard to just play through that and Mathmech unfortunately cannot play through that kind of you know combo line so I have um you know a separate section to go into that but with purely as well ex purely noir such a difficult monster to out because even if you do grind down all its materials so that way it is affected by cards you've used up a lot of resources they've gone back into your deck because not back to your hand which is kind of unfortunate and even if you out it after you've you know decreased all its materials because of my friend purely it can regain all of those quick play spells from the graveyard so not all but three which is a lot for them so the next round they essentially will dominate so anyway but my point is that mathmech has an extreme disadvantage against these decks because of the time it takes for us to win a game so if someone does make it to the top and makes the mathmech community proud then that's great but the whole purpose of this video of what i'm trying to get into is that i have um so two things the first thing is that i have a second deck variation that I think Mathmech players might enjoy a little bit more because it's a lot more consistent in getting the Code Talker support out as well as securing the Super Factorial, you know, Mathmech line with Laplacian materials ready for the next round, right? But the only thing I don't like about this deck, and that's why I don't play it, is because it doesn't include Terra Hearts. It doesn't have that versatility or essentially that risk that I like to take because I find that the bigger the risk you take, sometimes the bigger the reward, and that could be an instant scoop. And that's kind of what we're going for here. But of course, there's a lack of consistency in some cases. So... I wouldn't promote my deck, so to speak, but look, I'll just show you my deck here actually very quickly and I'll give you a case example. This card, I don't think anyone will play. I love it, but it's such a risk, so I completely understand. And then I've got a bunch of one-off cards in here, which can obviously provide a brick here because if you see one of each card, it doesn't really put you in the greatest position, but again, this is a best of one format. The game is completely based around luck, so I wouldn't really try and depend your whole, you know, your life thesis on that. So. That's just how I want to play and that's how I like to play. But I've got a second deck list and we'll go into that. And then the second part of this video is about side decking. So if you don't know what side decking is, it's basically a term from the TCG and the OCG. Because they play in a best of three format, essentially they switch in cards. It's, so they have a limit of 15 cards, something to highlight, but something that we don't have to follow. They get to switch in cards from their side deck into their main deck um, between games uh, against the same opponent. Sorry, kind of froze there, kind of trying to think around it in my head but basically yeah they play a best of three format and they can swap in cards in between games against the same opponent now because we are a best of one format in master Duel, we don't get that luxury that benefit or that feature because it's not really necessary to us also it would almost be like cheating because where are you going to find the space to like you know throw in cards that you need and then you just magically have them it, it takes the purpose out of the game really so i completely understand that but the whole reason i have built a side deck and i've had it for a long time now is because with Mathmic in particular, we have such a large variety of flex spots, particularly with hand traps. We can swap around, we can swap in and out, sorry, cards that we feel could add advantage to our deck. So my side deck is actually quite big because I like to actually think about, okay, what cards will I take a risk on and what cards can improve consistency? So without further ado, I'm going to go into the second alternative deck list for Mathmec that I've created. I think some people enjoy it more. And then I'm going to go into the side deck and we can kind of walk from it from there. So as I said before, this is the alternate deck list that I used to use actually in Season 20 or Season 21. I still think it's very versatile and very good to this day, but I just do find it lacks the versatility that my original deck has. So it's still pretty versatile and I'll walk through the combo line in a minute, but essentially the differences here is that we're going to play three Lady Debug, so that way we can secure either Code Generator if we already have Microcoda. And if we don't have Microcoda, then you're going to secure Microcoda itself if you don't already draw it, hence why we play three as well. And then Code Generator, we only play one of as well as Dotscaper to kind of extend the combo. Or if you only have this and not these two, essentially you're going to send Microcoda to the graveyard and then use Splash Mage to pick it up and then make Heat Soul or Transcode Talker, whichever kind of makes more sense in the turn. And then you're going to secure that Sign at Conflict line. So essentially there's an even split 
between support, so the Code Talk engine as well as Lady Debug, which I count as part of that engine, as well as the Mathmic line with all the level four bodies that you're trying to secure. You'll notice that multiplication is not here because it's not really the most viable point of this deck. The OTK line is very precisely just access Code Talker with Update Gemma, and we play two of each, but I'll get into that in a moment. So essentially how this deck is versatile is because it has a separate combo line for when you do, in other words, brick. So if you only have Lady Debug and Code Generator, using VLAN Hydra, you can secure the Sinet Conflict line and then the Super Factory Order line, which is usually the backwards order of how we would do things. But it's just to make sure you have both lines. So how it would work is you would use Lady Debug and Code Generator. By the way, I'll do a separate video on how it actually looks visually, just so it's a lot easier to understand. But I'll just ver I'll just verbally walk through it right now. So with Lady Debug and Code Generator, you will combo off to make Transcode Talker. By then you would have used Microcoder from Lady Debug to you know get your Transcode Talker as well as making Code Talker here. So that way, when you make Transcode Talker, you'll bring back you know Code Talker here, have an extending body. So it will likely be Dotscape in this case and you will create VLAN Hydra. So VLAN Hydra will be co-linked with Transcode Talker and essentially what you're gonna do here is use VLAN Hydra's effect to tribute Transcode Talker and create three Cyburst tokens. I'm just gonna call them five Cyburst tokens because they have their own name, but they're not, they're not very relevant at all. So, but just note that after this effect is uh, tri uh, triggered, you cannot summon any Link 3 monsters for the rest of the turn because you used a Link 3 monster to tribute its effect, to trigger its effect. Oof, again, Tripping over my own tongue. So essentially you're going to have three tokens on board with VLAN Hydra. You're going to use two of those tokens to make Cybus Wicked. Use the third one to make Lingaribo and that will trigger Wicked's effect to banish a Cybus monster from your graveyard. And then you will add a, it's not just any Cybus monster, it's a Tuna monster, I believe. Yeah, you add one Cybus Tuna monster from your deck to your hand. So what you'll be doing is you'll be grabbing Nabla. From your deck to your hand and then you'll use either Cybus Wicked and Lingaribo or Lingaribo and VLAN Hydra to go into Code Talker Inverted. So you'll special summon that Nabla from your your hand uh, and then you'll use Nabla to tribute either um, Code Talk Inverted or the other Cybus monster that you've left on the field to get Diameter because then once you have Diameter you're going to have Math Mix Circular. Uh, sorry I'm jumping ahead here. Once you have um, Diameter on the field you're going to have Diameter and Nabla go into Alan Bershon. Use Alan Bershon's effect to get Circular. And then you're going to use Circular as one card combo again to, you know, Mill Sigma. Ideally, you want to use everything that's in the extra monster zone. That way you can just tribute it and then bring back Sigma. Or you can just use Sigma, uh, Sigma's effect and let it get banished once it's been used up. And then you'll get your Super Factorial line as well as your Sinet Conflict line. But you won't be able to go into a Link 3 monster. So you will need to go into Access Code at the end of it. So I would keep VLAN Hydra just so you can link climb a little bit easier. And I would use Lingaribo as well as Cybus Wicked when you're um, making Code Talker Inverted. That way you contribute Code Talker Inverted, keep VLAN Hydra to the link three, and then go into your first access code. That's why we play um, two access code for one reason. The second reason, which I can now explain because I've gone through the combo line, is because playing against Kashichiro, they can now banish, you know, one card from your extra deck if you trigger Unicorn, of course. Um, and that means it's really important that you have two because it puts us in a really bad spot if we're not able to, you know, have our OTK line. And this is literally the only OT OTK line for this deck. It's a little bit sil um, similar to Salomon Grape. This is the same kind of OTK line that they use as well. So ideally you want to play two of these. You can swap one of these out and play a second Laplacian. Sometimes it's nice to just make the first Laplacian, pull a card from your opponent's hand if they've tried to hand trap you and force you into this VLAN Hydra combo and that way they have way less card economy and then for the next turn you've got super factorial as well as silent conflict so puts you in a good spot but even from just describing this i think you can agree that the mathmat combo is quite long itself so in this round of the tournament it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for mathmat players but essentially like this is a deck list that i used to use i think it's very very consistent because hence why we have so many you know ways to access the support cards as well as the level fours to go into you know the super factorial line however I don't really like the lack of versatility. I love Terra Hertz as an OTK line. If anything is an attack mode, it has 3,000 or less attack. I am more than able to go for game. And the fact that I can negate monster effects in the, uh, what do you call it, in the battle phase, just a little extra bonus for protection, and then you just slap for game. So I do really enjoy that. But that is the deck list. If you want to make any changes, by all means, uh, do so. If you don't like it, then you don't have to use it. And I also have the other one that I use. If you don't like that, don't have to use that either. But the differences between Mathmate decks are not going to be very high because a lot of the cards that we use are going to be similar. And if you're not using the Sinet Conflict line, I'm, 
I question how well you're going to do because if you're playing for fun, then by all means play for fun. But if you're playing for results, I really think your only way is to have this card within your deck somewhere. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to move on to the side deck and we can kind of walk through the cards I have in there. Okay, so as you can see, I do have quite a few cards in my side deck just because I like to have various options for each card that I'm trying to swap out. So they're not just hand traps that I'll be, you know, flexing in, but they there are a few going first cards as well as, you know, negate cards as well. But we'll just go through each of them quickly. Um, Before I actually get into it, just to highlight, the, the cards, sorry, the cards, the archetypes that I feel play the best against Mathmech and the ones that you're probably going to see the most in the meta are obviously Cash Tira because they're number one now. Kashtira purely, always going to be the top ones, and they're probably going to perform the best in the Duelist Cup just because their boss monsters are Floodgates, as I've um, already like touched on before. Labyrinth, Dragon Link, maybe Sprite. I don't think Sprite Gishki is too strong, but Labyrinth and Dragon Link for sure, and then maybe Rika. You won't, Rika's not exactly a popular choice, but them going first, they are really good. Like, everything that you have is tributed for cost, so it doesn't really get to react in time to do anything. So even if you negate the monster that's, you know, tributing your monster your monster is gone already it's the cost of it so it's a uh, yeah very um very tough situation very tough matchup for them so without you know delaying this any further i'm just going to jump straight into this so effect veiler effect veiler is a great card i do find that a lot of mathmic decks do play this but i just don't have that space in my deck so there's nothing that i want to swap out i'm quite happy with deck lockdown and the thing is if i didn't have to play maxi i would just play effect veiler it's nice to have this card but the reason why i chose droll and lockbird Ash and obviously Maxi over this card is because I find that this card doesn't really perform that well by itself. So what I mean by that is when in the certain matchups, so if we're talking like Dragon Link, Dragon Link can play through so many negates, but one droll kind of puts them in a spot of right. Okay, I can't act, I cannot add Boot Sec to launch to my hand. Dragon's Ravine can't use a rocket I think launcher from the graveyard to add another rocket card to my hand like. It does implicate them very, very badly. Droll versus, you know, Effect Veiler. Effect Veiler is, to be honest, is better against Mathmech, if anything. So the Mirror Match, yeah, it's pretty decent. But other decks, I feel like you're counting on them bricking for this card to be good. So decks like Purely. Pure Lily is, you know, a hard once per turn for both effects, right? But Purely is soft once per turn. So even if you negate the first one, they have plenty of quick play spells to summon another one. And then add, activate its effect to excavate the top three cards of it. And it, they can just keep doing it. And con considering that their whole deck is built on, you know, quick play spells like Sky Striker is, they can just keep finding more of their cards. Obviously, if they don't see any of them when they excavate them, they're just really unlucky because the majority of their deck is quick play spells. So for them, it's quite easy to them to play around Effect Veiler. And of course, Labyrinth. Labyrinth is not really affected by Effect Veiler much at all. That is quite an odd deck. I feel like... Ash and Ghost Spell are the best cards against that deck, but I'll get onto Ghost Spell in a moment. So I'd rather have Ash versus Effect Veiler. And then with Cash Tira, you can negate the first monster, so like Cash Tira Unicorn. If you negate it, maybe you have a chance of stopping them from getting birth or Theosis. But if they have one or the other, or even both in hand, then that Effect Veiler really does nothing. They've baited it and kind of sucks because it doesn't really add any economy. So that really is um, unfortunate. But the fact that this can only activate in the main phase is also another thing. A lot of the game states can be played in... Sorry, game states. What am I talking about? A lot of the combos, for like purely for example, can be played within the draw phase. So draw phase and standby phase, they dodge the negation of Effect Veiler. And then in the battle phase, this card can't, can't be used anyway. Because like, like it says, during the main phase only. And it's only during your opponent's turn. So I get that this card needs a balance. But man, I don't know. When I see this card and it's my turn, it just sucks. Because I'm just like, what can I actually do with it? It's, it's got nothing. It's not a level 4. I guess it's a light monster, great, you can bridge, but if I don't have Small World, it's also another crap card. So, like, yeah, to me, not that great of a card. So, if Fate Villa, it's great in some cases, but in most, I just find the matchup is not good enough for me to put it over Droll and um, Ash, and of course, you know, Maxi. Kurikara, I play this currently in my deck. I do think it's a really good card. I think it's the best, um, you know, monster tribute card at the minute because with Arise Heart and Shangri Era being on the board, they both naturally trigger their effects, so it's easy to, you know, substitute both of them. And if they bring out Fenrir from Shangri Era's effect, if you ban it, it's not banish. If you bait out the Fenrir with, I don't know, maybe Circular, you can just tribute all three. And then that is a clear board. And in fact, you won't even need to go for the full combo with Mathmech. I would not, you shouldn't bait them out with Circular if you're going to try and do this. But essentially, you'd only have to create a monster with 2,000 attack because this thing will have 6,000 attack, 6,000, 2,000, 8,000. You've got, you know, lethal damage per game. So... 
I think Kurikara is actually fantastic in that matchup. And then with Purely as well, you can get rid of Noir because essentially they're going to draw cards in your standby phase from its own effect, from the, you know, the quick play spells effect. So I do think it's a really good card to kind of out the biggest boss monsters. And the thing is, with a Kaiju, you're giving the monster to them, so they tend to be quite big bodies to get over, whereas Kurikara is on your team, so I quite like that it summons to your side of the field. So I much prefer that to a Kaiju, if I'm being honest. But look, uh, I don't have to say much on that. It's great against the top two decks. Not great against Labyrinth. Not great against Dragon Link. And against Rika, also not very good. Because essentially with Rika, they are waiting for you to make you know certain actions before they tribute your monster and negate it. And then then you use Kurikara and then it's like, okay, now what? Because unless you have you know the natural extenders, you put yourself in a really shit position. So also... Remember, they trigger, uh, trigger, they tribute your monsters for cost. So even if they're negated, the fact that they can activate their own ability, your monster can still be tributed, but the intended, you know, effect and action won't be, you know, resolved. But they'll still, you'll still lose your monster essentially. So it does really suck, unfortunately. I'm not too much of a fan of that. But anyway, uh, moving on because there's not much else to say about Kiri Kairos. It's an amazing card. Frame Gear Gamma. The thing I don't like about this card is that its counterpart, which is Frame Driver awful i hate drawing this card anytime i draw it i know it's a brick and to me like if it was a level four then i could actually live with this but the fact that it's not really puts you in a terrible position when you draw it because it is not summonable nor do you want to summon it in any way other than from gamma's ability so unless you see gamma in your hand as well this card is definitely a brick it's terrible so i don't like it not really a big fan but in certain matchups it does really help um, clear the board so because it destroys the monster as well I just think it's a bit annoying that Ash can stop it. So I know that Ash doesn't stop it permanently, so you can use it again. But I'm trying to think of like situations where you really, where your opponent won't actually, you know, adapt to the situation at hand. So yeah, it's a bit unfortunate. Like even if you out the first Xyz monster from purely, they'll just use the quick play spells to go again. Like I'm sure they'll probably have my friend purely on the board, so they'll get back those quick play spells and then build another Xyz monster and then. You know, Gamma was for nothing, really. It didn't really add any value. So it does really suck, in my opinion. So it's only good to sub in against, I guess, Dragon Link. Sometimes they're in a desperate game state, and it's good to, like, break the Lubelion so they don't have that regained or branded beast at the end, because that's uh, an extra added bonus to their board, in my opinion. So I, I would say that's probably uh, the only matchup. That and Kashtira to some degree. The thing with getting rid of Kashtira is that, let's say you have Impermanence in your hand, and uh, gamma, you have to use impermanence first, first of all, to because otherwise, once you use gamma, you have monsters on the board, so that way you can't use impermanence. But secondly, once you destroy one of their monsters, all their monsters can special summon themselves when you have a free board if you control no monsters. So you're not disrupting the play that much. You're just counting on them bricking, and most of the time, Kashtira can play through quite a few like things, at least from my experience anyway. I, I know I've read stuff about them being bricky, but it's not been the main case for me. I think they play pretty well uh, against me anyway. Ghost Ogre. Now, this is a very experimental card. For me, I, I think this is better against, you know, the continuous spells. So, My Friend Purely, as well as Kashtira Buff, because both of them don't trigger their effects on activation. They both activate, and then you can manually trigger the effect. So, but this only cares about the actual card being activated. Once it um, activates, you just destroy it, and then... Yeah, look, okay, I was going to say, if it's just a monster, I was like, what am I talking about? But no, it is when a spell trap is already placed on the field. Oh no, so look, I'm even wrong here. Okay, so yeah, it's not even good against Kashtira Buff and Kashtira, um, and um, my friend Purely because they still get to draw the card. Yeah, that's pretty poor. Yeah, I'm going to be honest, this is not very good. It's only good in certain matchups because it doesn't actually negate the effect. I knew that part, but I thought maybe it would do on activation. Yeah, that's that kind of sucks. Okay, so you've just witnessed me take something out live. Okay, so let's leave that alone. Ghost Bell. Now, Ghost Bell used to be great when Bestials were the top of the top. Because when they were just released, there wasn't really that essence of like Cash Tira. Tier limits were at all time high, so it was good against tier limits, but it was really good against Mathmet because they'd always banish stuff like Sigma or Diameter when we're trying to build up in our first turn. And then in our second turn, they can always use, I guess, um, Rocket. I forget the name, which one. It, it, it can destroy a monster as a quick effect. They would destroy Durus Worm, and it's like a double effect because they get a new monster, as well as, you know, having Durus Worm remove one of our monsters by playing, and it's crazy. Great combo. As well as Branded Beast, because Branded Beast is basically Dogmatico Punishment if they use Druus Worm as the material to tribute, you know, the bestial. So that was the only time I really saw this card. That and Labyrinth. Everything else, I don't think it, it provides value. 
The only times you'll see them against Kashtira and Purely, very, very situational. So against Purely, it would be if you out there Xyz monster whilst my friend Purely's on the board, you can stop them from, you know, getting those quick play spells back to their hand. And then for Kashtira, you're just stopping Kashtira buff from reviving a banished or graveyard monster because because the effect mentions the graveyard, this card takes effect and will, you know, negate also a summon from the um, banished pile as well. But not from the uh, trap card, from the continuous spell only. The trap card is banished and hand as well they can summon from, so this won't affect it. But that's precisely my point where I just don't think the current format cares for ghost spell. It doesn't really matter. Like, maybe you can protect your super factorial from, you know, um, called by the grave, so that way, you know, all your materials stand through. But I don't really think there's much point preparing for that. That's why we have Sinet Conflict. If they don't have it, then it's even better for us because then we get to keep Sinet Conflict. But if they do have Call by the Grave, we can just use Sinet Conflict and they can't respond. So works really well for us. So I, I do like that a lot. But yeah, that's pretty much it for Ghost Spell. Not much to say. Denko Seka. So one thing about this card that I do not like before I get into like the pros of it is that with every card that every ma um, sorry every monster that you summon, there's a space of time that you're allowed to activate something before that normal summon resolves which is a weird thing to think of but stuff like solemn judgment can negate a summon because of that space of time and i think you can imperm this card basically once it's been summoned because essentially the effect that it has does not take place but i'm not I'm not 100 percent certain i just remember that you can activate certain cards maybe it's just counter traps but from my experience this is when you know solemn judgment you know can negate a summon and something else has been happened to me before but i forgot but Regardless, this card is really good against Labyrinth. It's good against Kashtira if um, you're, you know, you're able to negate or, or bait out there, you know, banishing, um, what do you call them, effects. Because essentially, if this card leaves, then, you know, its on-field effect doesn't take place. It just stops your opponent from activating set cards that they have. So stuff like Super Polymerization can't activate, which is huge because that is something that cannot be responded to. And it does fuck up the Mathlec line really badly because they just tribute a lot of our monsters. Like the, the board essentially goes. So it is really tough. Um, that and then of course stuff like Imperm just, you know, stays face down. But either way, it is still affected by monster effects. So against stuff like Dragon Link, it's kind of annoying because essentially they're a Link Boroland Dragon can just negate Denko Seka. Nothing can respond to Boroland Dragon as well, which is really bad. And then it just, yeah, you lose the effect of Denko Seka already. So against Dragonling, it sucks. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Against Labyrinth and against Kashtira, it's pretty good. Against Purely, not so great. And then against Rika, not so great because they can just tribute it for cost. So Denk, uh, Denko Seka is like great in some formats, but I haven't felt the need to sub this in yet. But it, it's a really cool card. It's a level four and light as well. So good bridge for Small World as well as good material for um, Alan Bershon. I, I thought it was down here for a second. But moving on to Artifact Lancia. So with artifact lancia the thing that you have to bear in mind is this stops banishment for both players so it's great against not just um you know Kashtira and dragon link to stop them from going into their main plays but it's great for um oh, and labyrinth to stop big welcome banishing itself like i think that's a really good thing uh, but it's really good for evenly match so if someone tries to evenly match you you can use this card and neither of you can banish so even though the effect is on the player because this is also an effect on the player it really works well so i do like how this um this card kind of you know fends off so and if they have two evenly matched it means one of them is completely null now and they're likely scoop because an, an empty evenly match whilst you've picked other cards from their hand yeah pretty uh pretty good scenario quite like it so yeah artifact lancia um something i'm definitely going to consider putting into the deck would be so cool if it was level four if it was level four this card would have way more versatility into the mathematic line but because it's level five it's primarily a hand trap and will stay that way now, Chaos Hunter, I used to like this card, but I've had a real change of um, heart about it because essentially there's a lot of conditions to summoning this card. And I know Flu is not one of the top decks I was mentioning, but this card sucks against Flu because you have to get it out by your own means of like tribute summon. And Flu don't special summon, so this card cannot be like, you know, summoned by its own effect. And you lose a card when doing so. So the only decks I see this really affecting is... Hmm... I'd say it affects Kashtira because they can't banish your monsters, neither or their own. And then Dragon Link because they can't banish their own monsters or or your own as well. So I suppose it's good against those sort of banished decks because, well, essentially that's what it stops. But it doesn't protect you from evenly matched because you will be the one banishing your own cards by its own effect. So that's why I think Artifact Lancy is a bit better. But Artifact Lancy can only be used on your opponent's turn. Just bear that in mind. So like during your opponent's turn. So 
if it was on your turn, it would be great, but it's only your opponent's turn. So I would say Artifact Lancer definitely takes precedent over the Chaos Hunter. Plus it's a level seven. So if you do use it on Kashtira, they can just go into Big Eye, take Chaos Hunter from you permanently, and then summon something else and then go and then go into the rest of their play because it's not that big of a disruption to them. Uh, there was something else I wanted to say about Artifact Lancer, but I forgot. Oh, so with Sinet Conflict, I know it has the effect of banishment, but you won't lose the effect of negation. So you'll still negate the effect of something like it's an omni negate still but you will not banish that card so if you are looking to out something from the board with that card you won't but you'll at least you'll negate the effect because that's the important thing of it um well the banishment is important as well but if you needed to use artifact lancia then i'm sure that you wouldn't mind the fact that because conflict's not going to banish it just because whatever caused you to trigger this in the first place must have been worth it so i do think it's a really good card and i'm thinking about um playing the sim now, Sphere Mode, so I'll be honest, I've only put this in because, well, I got it from a pack and I just wanted to kind of explain that it's only good against Kash Tira and Dragon Link. So a lot of these seem to be only Kash Tira and Dragon Link, but against Purely, Labyrinth, even Sprite to some degree, this card is not very good, and Rika as well. It's not it's not very good because essentially Dragon Link, Kash Tira, and I guess Rika actually, never mind, I'll put, I'll put Rika in it. So those three archetypes tend to end on a board, their strongest board, with three or more monsters on it. So this is where this card actually is pretty good for that, I'm not going to lie, but it counts as your normal summon, doesn't affect your transco play, so it does put you in a very strong position of, okay, you've cleared the board basically, and now you can, you know, combo for the rest of the game. So I do kind of appreciate that, to be fair, and it doesn't require any sort of, you know, monster activation, but against anything like purely, yeah, it kind of sucks because, yeah, that just, that is really unfortunate when I think about it. Against purely, they only have the one monster on board. Like, Noir is enough to make you want to scoop if you don't have the out. And if you have this in your hand, yeah, you certainly want to scoop. It's um, truly, truly terrible. But, I mean, you could always, I don't know, summon Circular, summon Sigma, and then tribute all three of them using this. So, it's not the worst thing. But how would you get into the rest of the plays? I have no idea. Really, really difficult to tell. So, yeah, um, that's why it's in the side deck for now. So, until I actually see use for it, it's going to stay here. Nibiru, I think it's a uh, god-given why this is in here um it's in my main deck obviously because i've you know made some replays with it but this card is just amazing against cash tira it's okay against purely and it's okay against uh dragon link you really need to know when to use it against uh, both cash tira and dragon link terrible against labyrinth like really really bad i can't imagine a game state where this card will even be usable because they just don't summon up to five times it's always one to three and yeah even then i don't know it's a very tough scenario to kind of judge there so it's good against them it's only good against sprite if they don't summon gigantic because gigantic locks them into level two link two plays um link two monsters only for both players so this card is no longer usable and that, that really does kind of suck unfortunately um oh there is a card that i forgot to add where is it how did i forget this so i have been meaning to add this card in so Obviously against, um, you know, Sprite, this won't present much of an issue, but other decks that require the extra deck and, and to, like, summon, this is a pretty good card because, well, unless they use Mascarena, then they're still, I think they'll be fine. But essentially, this card locks them into Link plays. So if it's a if it's a deck like Kash Tira, they're almost stuck from this card because, and they can't uh, summon Nibiru. So you're free to summon as many times as you want because Nibiru being a... Um, so you cannot special summon monsters except link monsters oh that is crazy okay i misread that oh that is crazy so unless they have um you know they have to normal summon a monster and then go into mascarena because it requires you know two non-link monsters this card can really out a lot of um, boards a lot of archetypes so i definitely think um what's his face i definitely think cash Tira would suffer to this card but the others i'm not too sure so again this is the side deck so um, i'm glad we've added that in and taken ghost ogre out uh, but okay, we'll move on to Harpy's Feather Duster. So the only thing I'm not a fan about this card is because it's limited to one, which I completely understand because like the effect itself is very strong. So if you don't have an out for it, it, you know, it's already messed up your game as it is. But having a card like this in your deck, I've been in a lot of scenarios where I needed it but didn't see it and vice versa where I've got it but don't need it. Like going first, why do you need this card? Like it's not really, you know, fun. I guess it's okay to like you know out certain you know negations from the board um and then force them to use them early if if it's turn three and you 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 went first originally so i guess it's okay in that sake uh, in that scenario but i'm not a huge fan uh one thing to point out just really quickly so everything from Har harpy's feather duster to triple tactics talent they're all normal spells and they all pair with 
triple tactics thrust so well so as i go through with them just remember that you, you're likely going to be playing thrust alongside them to make sure that you can get into this card so with thrust this card becomes semi-viable because i would play two thrust to make sure that we have some some consistent <laughs> some, some some consistency to get into this card so harpy's feather duster is decent but you would need thrust same with um actually no monster reborn doesn't require th um, thrust but i suppose it can add that extra you know impact if you need it but for me it's more it's not really expected and a lot of players don't play ghost spell anymore so the protection of you know getting a monster from either graveyard to the field is pretty good you can even get um you know your opponent's fenrir if you wanted but i would try and stick to your own cyburst monsters you know resummoning those whether it's a link monster that you want to bring back because you can really start some good plays from it it can activate its effects again so i think that's something to like really really consider so yeah uh, monster reborn pretty good card i'm not gonna lie it's something that i've thought about putting in but i've got a lot of you know copies of one card in my deck anyway so i don't want too many otherwise it really messes with like the ratio and how and the probability that you're open with certain cards so i try not to play this card but it is a good it is a really good addition to the deck in my opinion i think you can continue a lot of plays and even skip some of the link climbing because you can just reborn something um without having to you know summon a monster that has that effect to re like reborn something so i do appreciate that if i'm going to be honest so i do really like that a lot so that's one thing Change of heart. What I like about this is the monster that you take control of does not, you know, it doesn't count as a special summon. So it doesn't interrupt with any of your cyburst lock plays. You're just taking a monster from them. I think this would be particularly good against Cash Tira Arise Heart because if you take their Arise Heart and say they have Shangri Era on board as well as Fenrir, what you could do is you can take their Arise Heart. As soon as this card goes to the graveyard, you can trigger Arise Heart's effects to grab the, um, you know, change of heart. Now your opponent is locked into two decisions. It can either, you know, use Fenrir to banish it, or you have your Rise Heart and you can banish their um, Fenrir or Shangri Era, and that's up to you, completely up to you. Because from that point, you haven't used a special summon. You can still go into the rest of your combo, and you've essentially you've taken away their strongest monster. So, what I would do is I would use a Rise Heart, banish Fenrir, mm, yeah, banish Fenrir, summon a monster. And like normal summon a monster and then tribute both of them to make a uh, code talker because it requires two effect monsters and then combo from there because that's your i think that's going to be your best chance of you know completing the rest of the round and essentially going for the otk so just be careful with fenrir and banishing yeah i'd probably go for fenrir than shangri era i think you have a better chance so i'd go for fenrir and then tribute off um a rice heart and then go for the rest of your play which would be probably access code before you go into anything so yeah i think change of hearts another good card those two i put side by side not so hot on the harpy's feather dust to be honest now herald of the abyss this is like seen a real rise in popularity so this uh this card with thrust is essentially a summoned kaiju it's really good you basically just out um any monster on the board by declaring the type and the attribute and your, your opponent has to send it to the graveyard i think that is really cool but dk did mention that a good play that a lot of purely players will need to incorporate is basically you will set a quick play spell and if you do activate herald of the abyss they will summon pure lily which is the same type and attribute as ex purely noir and then you won't even out um ex purely noir because they can just choose purely and from purely summon they can add a card from their deck to their hand so if they do survive the round they will absolutely dominate the next round because they'll have more card economy to just push through yeah it's insane actually they'll have so much card economy to push through the game so essentially herald of the abyss is good but i think the one matchup where you're gonna struggle is um purely if they you know prepare it properly if not then you're all solid but you put you have to push for the otk unfortunately so um yeah but it doesn't trigger my friend purely because your opponent had to send it to the graveyard i think that's the added bonus that i do like about this card so they don't you know retrieve all that card economy as you wish so i do think i, I like that a lot uh, and then i'm trying to think of the other matchups it would be pretty good against um dragon link but they could probably negate it with borrow load savage dragon the synchro monster so it really depends they'll probably negate the thrust by the time they you know they allow that to happen anyway so i do think that's a bit of a struggle so yeah it really does depend on the game state but stuff like kurikara and kaijus i think sometimes are better than this especially for dragon link but uh for cash tira yeah this is pretty good but i think herald of the abyss is best against purely and then the kaijus and everything that substitute is be better against cash tira like dragon link and that lot labyrinth don't get affected by these cards at all much which is so crazy like so so crazy so anyway moving on we're gonna go to lightning storm lightning storm is just a great card it's basically you know you're three of this card but 
I think the thing that sucks about this card is in later rounds, it definitely loses value because you cannot activate it unless you have no face-up cards. So in a later game state, you're likely to have face-up cards and you can't exactly flip them down to flip them back up. It's not really, you know, a feature of this game. So that is truly unfortunate. Uh, but still a good, I think it's a good starting position. I had Raigeki in here, but I took it out because the only difference between this and Raigeki is that Raigeki destroys all monsters regardless of their battle position if they're face-up or face-down. But this only destroys attack positions uh, attack position monsters so and your opponent is likely to put them into defense position so you do lose a bit of that economy but i prefer how it kind of you know destroys the back row as well so to me it's just harpy feathers uh, harpy's feather duster but going second so better for this type of rounds and then triple tactics talent i love this card but this card does not love me so i never see this card when i want it and when i have it i'm never able to activate it, and i i just hate that it really is really like super dependent on your opponent activating a monster effect and i thought that would be common but since i whenever i add that card to my deck it just never happens so maybe i'll add it as a deterrent to um what i consider you know um what's that word i'll just call it luck for now but um just so crazy when i add this card i'm trying to think of that word what is that word when you think of something and then Oh, I've forgotten it. It's on the tip of my tongue. But, oh, it doesn't matter. Look, my point is that this card is great. Like, a Mathematic player's dream is to have their full combo, use one Laplacian in the first turn, rip a card from your opponent's hand, them activating a, you know, some sort of um, monster effect on your turn, whether it's Maxi and you negated it, whatever. And then you can use Triple Tactics to look at their hand and, you know, get rid of another card. And oh, the, the card economy they'd have was so would be so weak. And then for your next turn, having Sinet Conflict, Super Factorial, Plus, knowing their plays, yeah, this card offers so much value. It's something I, I'm so eager to put in, but based on my history of this card, I've given it such a chance and it just hasn't worked out for me. So, yeah, I'm just going to leave it. Uh, Thrust, I've already explained how well it works with these cards. The only thing I would add is that, let's say that your circular gets negated and you don't get to the Super Factorial, right? I would just continue to get the materials for Super Factorial if you have this card in your hand. And then from there, I would just use, because, but well, remember, a monster effect has to be activated by your opponent this turn so make sure that's the reason why you can activate this and then you can just set super factorial with this card just bear in mind that it can get ash though because part of the effect is that you can add something to your hand so if it does get ash you do lose that you know play of line so be very very careful of that uh and then debt lockdown I'm not going to go into it. i've already done a whole video on it now sign it codec i won't go into it because again i have a different video explaining the you know the power of this card and it's so good and i still love it but i wanted to take a risk on a card like deck lockdown because Essentially, I've played against a lot of players that don't fear the Sinet Conflict Super Factorial line, which tells me that because people are getting used to it, they're thinking of more ways to get around it. And so I wanted to take the risk on a different card that might offer me that extra sort of power play and, you know, scare my opponents into not being able to do anything. Like I said in my past video, this card, absolutely, if you're going first and you put this down, you have stopped Purely, you have stopped Labyrinth, you have stopped Dragon Link to a, a certain degree. And then you've definitely stopped Kachitira to some degree because a lot of their cards need to be added to hand. So unless they draw the perfect hand, this card does put them in a really tough position. So, and if we're going first, you know, we got a strong end board and I love it. So I am taking a risk on this card and I'm loving it. I'm even trying to get it in, you know, the Royal Finish because I just love it so much. But Sinet Codec is a fantastic card. If you want to add this to your deck, I have a tutorial about how to use it going first and going second. So definitely go check that out if you want a little bit more information around the background of this card. But essentially this card just helps you get the strong end board of Sinet Conflict and Super Factorial plus Terahertz and Heat Soul. That's that's what it guarantees for you. And the thing is, you can guarantee it without it. So I just don't want to... Well, not guarantee it. Okay, that's not... Sorry, I don't want to get ahead of myself. But what I mean is you can get that end board without it. And then this card is just extra oomph to your end boards. And I really like that. I really want that. So I'm taking the risk. But if you want to play it safe, Sinet Codec is a really good card to rely on. Now, Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse, I'll describe them together because essentially they have the same effects, but with just a little bit different properties. So... I was preferring Book of Eclipse, I was playing it quite a bit before, but with Ash being such a staple hand trap, it's so common for your opponent to have it, like 3 cards out of 40, but realistically 3 cards out of 35, because you've got the first 5 in your hand, like the idea of them drawing this card, like it's not that hard for them to get Ash in their hand, so when you need to use this card, and it, the card that it's the card that you're going to rely on the most, and then they have Ash, you, that's it, that's game over, because it's completely declined it, and it's over. It's really good against Kashtira, really good against um, uh, Purely if they try to set up Noir with the trap, because essentially you'll just, you know, flip their Xyz monster face down and whatever else they've summoned. And then that way, 
yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's over really. They can't really summon anything else. Uh, yeah, because they can't use the Carter's material. Sorry, I got lost in my head a little bit there. So it's really good for that. And essentially, Book of Moon has the same effect, except for this is targeting and it's only one monster. But I find Book of Moon plays a little bit better value than Eclipse because it just cannot be negated by a simple hand trap. Like, it requires your opponent to have an active, you know, um, negation of um, effect. So it's either cross out and they have this card in their deck or they tribute the monster or some way of dodging the targeting because that way, you know, Book of Moon loses its value and they still get everything they want from the card. So these do these two do present good value, but not in um, not against Dragon Link, not against Labyrinth. Sprite in some cases they do. Rika only against like the normal summon monsters. I'll be honest, a lot of their monsters can play around this stuff because they contribute stuff. So yeah, it's a bit I don't know. Don't think it's the best card in this format. It's just good against Kashtira for me. Kashtira and on the niche occasion, purely. That's it for me. So I'll just leave that as it is. But if I feel like it's going to be more relevant, then I'll add it back. Now, this is a card that I've been wanting to experiment with. I tried it for a few games and I did see the immediate use of it, but I needed to cut down certain cards and I just decided to choose this. But this card is essentially how you're going to dodge negation. So as a Mathmic player, the most common thing that I get negated is my Alan version. And it's always by Effect Vela or Imperm. Well, mostly Imperm. I don't really see Effect Vela that much, if I'm being honest, but it's it's happened before. But why this card is so good is because what you can do is you contribute your Alan version, and then based on this effect, you can add a Cyburst monster from your deck to your hand with attack lower than the original attack. So 2,000 attack from Alan version. Every single monster in our um, main deck that is Cyburst has a lower attack than 2,000. So you can add anything you want from your deck to your hand. And likelihood is you're going to go into your... Uh, what do you call it? You're going to go into your uh, microcoder play, the Code Talker support stuff, so that way you can secure your Sinek Conflict from there. And it's just amazing. Like, I really appreciate it because you can dodge the negation, so you'll still get the diameter from that, um, you know, Alan Bershon search. So you can normal summon diameter, bring back the other Mathmet monster from the graveyard, use um, a Splash Mage to go grab another card from the graveyard, bring it back, use microcoder that you've added from your deck to your hand to go into Transcode Talker with Splash Mage, bring back Splash Mage, and you have Heat Soul and Transcode Talker co-linked with Sinite Conflict and Super Factor on board with the natural bodies for Laplation. And this is only talking about if you don't have the natural extenders. If you have extenders in your hand, then it's even better because you can just keep going. And it's just crazy. Like you can make the terahertz board and then draw more cards for economy. Incredible. Like I, I really do think this card is something that I'm going to consider. It has a nice little bonus effect that during your next standby phase, you get the monster back. So Alan Burshin in this case would come back. And it, it can um, attack directly. So I'm not sure about the attack directly being that great, but it's an extra bonus if your opponent has somehow used, I don't know, two Solemn Judgments, brought themselves down to 2,000 or below life points. Just attack Valen Bush and you're, you're really solid to go, really. I don't see any problem with it. But yeah, look, this is something I'm considering. Maybe consider it yourself. Uh, I'd maybe play one to two of it. It seems like a pretty good card, actually. And um, yeah, I might give it a chance uh, later on, to be honest. But I'll move on now. So Forbidden Droplet, I'm a huge fan of the Forbidden cards. Chalice, um... Lance and then obviously Droplet. I wasn't a fan of the other ones. The other ones aren't you know, too big of a deal. But these three are pretty good. The thing with Droplet is I don't like that it requires you to use your own cards as cost, of course. And it's a fair thing. It's non-targeting, you know, uh, non-targeting negate. So you can just choose the monsters on the board up to the number of cards that you tribute. And of course, you can dodge stuff like Solemn Judgment if you use a trap card in your hand or field as one of the you know cards that you tribute. And that way you can just negate as many monsters on the board as you want. It's great. It was it was great against Sprite in its heyday. It's great against the uh, Dragon Link now with the M board that they have. But you have to tribute a monster, don't forget. Like, at least one. But it just sucks because like, you have to use so many cards if your opponent has like a really strong end board. And against Kashtira, because you're sending cards to the graveyard is a very specific requirement. Yeah, it won't work. So this card is not activatable against uh, Kashtira. And that's why it loses complete value in my opinion. And then against uh, Purely... Doesn't even work then because it's unaffected by activated effects. Doesn't matter if it's um you know able to be, you know, not targeted or non-targeted like you know as a as a target, it just wouldn't work against them. So it does unfortunately suck in those matchups and those are the most popular matchups at the minute. So that's why I leave it alone. It's the same with um Forbidden Lance and Forbidden Chalice. Forbidden Lance is better than Chalice at the minute. I like Chalice because it's basically imperm but a quick play spell, so you can use it even when you have bodies on the board uh, from your hand. Is what I'm saying. Uh, and then Lance is great because if someone tries to, you know, imperm your, I don't know, your terahertz or your access code, you can just decrease its attack by 800, but it's unaffected by spell or trap cards for the rest of the turn. And I do really like that, but 
it can really make you suffer and depend on that card. So I primarily don't like it. I would, I think I'd rather play something like Silent Backdoor anyway. So, but yeah, that's uh, that's where Forbidden Droplet is for me. It's not good against any of the other matchups, unfortunately. Dimensional Barrier. This card is actually lethal. So I am considering putting this card in against um, Kashtira and against um, Purely. I forgot the name there. It's amazing because basically this effect is an effect on the game state and the players. So it all exes monsters on the field if I declare that. And in these key, in this case, I will because it's Kashtira and Purely. So the boss monsters are exes monsters. Basically, this card will negate the effect of all exes monsters on the field for the rest of the turn. And why that is so good is it for the rest of the turn? So neither player can special summon them. That's pretty much a huge bonus, actually, if you can activate it before they even get those cards out on the board. Oh, while they're on the field. That is crazy. Okay, yeah, okay. My bad. This, uh, this card actually plays way more value than I realized. So essentially, it negates the effects of all Xyz monsters while they're on the field. So yeah, that's crazy. I didn't realize that. But the only thing is with Laplation, summoning Laplation, we wouldn't be able to if we triggered this really quickly. And we would lose the value of its Omni Negate as well as card removal. So it does, you know, impact us as well. It does really implicate our plays as well. But such a cool card. And I'm considering playing it, but it really, really depends on whether I'm willing to take that gamble. It does take away the whole point of Math Mech, which is Laplation. So just something to consider. Solemn Judgment is great. I think the only thing about this card is that it can stop the summon on anything, but you pay half your life points. And against decks like Purely, for example, I think the thing that annoys me the most is that if they have my friend Purely on, which is uh, very likely, it's a very common thing for them to have that on the board when they're Xyz summoning, because they're counting on you if, you if you do remove their Xyz monsters, they still get the cards back. They get up to three quick play spells back. So I, I do think it's kind of shit, if I'm being honest. It, it's kind of a tough um, call to make. But against a lot of decks, whenever they put out their Towers monster, this card just stops it because it doesn't matter if it's unaffected by card effects. That small space of time where you can activate an effect, particularly this one, you can just stop a monster from existing. Like the amount of times I've had Final Sigma um, activated, brought to the board, and it's just destroyed because Solemn Judgment has just negated the summon entirely. So <laughs> it takes a lot of very specific materials to get to um, uh, Final Sigma. So it is quite frustrating if, I, if I'm being honest. But I'll move on from that. It's not really much to say. Grand Horn of Heaven. So this is not a very popular card, but this card is really good. I, I primarily would love to use it in the second main phase. But you're asking for a very specific game state in doing that. So during your opponent's main phase, it doesn't have to be one or two. It could be either. Uh, when they would special summon a monster, negate the summon, and if you do destroy that monster, then your opponent enjoys one card. So essentially, I've used it when my opponent special summons Fenrir. I just destroy it immediately. They draw one card, and now we're in the battle phase. The only problem I see with this card, and you have to be careful, is if your opponent is playing evenly matched, you immediately jump into that. And it's kind of like, if you don't have Sign at Conflict for whatever reason, you essentially have forced this game state upon yourself, and you've really fucked yourself over. So... I think that's a really, and you can't activate, what's the face? You can't activate Super Factorial in response to evenly matched. So if they do have it, it's not like you anticipated it. It just happened because of your own card effect. So I would try and be careful of that. Make sure you have Sign It Conflict if you're going to risk having this card. Um, but other than that, it is a really good card. Imagine using it in main phase two because your Super Factorial and Sign It Conflict have really disrupted their main phase one and forced them into the second main phase. Yeah, essentially, I don't, I don't know what to say. It ends the turn. Now you're on your third turn going for the OTK. So I think you're in a really, really strong spot there. Yeah, they lose the they lose the second main phase. What am I saying? They're not able to set cards. That is really powerful. That is a really cool thing to have. Like, Particularly against um, Labyrinth. Because Labyrinth would struggle on the next turn. And then, of course, Cash Terra, they can't resummon or anything. So they'll have a completely empty board, essentially. So very good. Uh, I put Red Reboot here just because um, I'm thinking about playing two but I don't want to open with two at any point. That really sucks, but it's a really, really good card. I actually might play two, depends. It's amazing for OTKing because you stop any impermanence and Labyrinth like suffer against this card really, really badly. So I do think it's a really good card. It's good against Kashtira as well. And it's even been good with me against um, Runic because I have a replay where they try to use, they can only be one against me. And that card completely fucks Math Mate because we have to choose one monster. It will likely have 2300 attack only. And then from there, then, like, <laughs> your opponent survives the round and they can summon, you know, Gary. They can summon uh, the Fairy. I can't remember the other one. Um, and then they can just keep playing, really, like, getting more cards from their deck to their hand because they just draw more and more cards. And, yeah, it's just unfortunate, really.
And then the actual last card from the main deck is Grave of the Super Ancient. So this card, definitely not seen in, you know, Master Door, but this card has been seen in the TCG for their um, side deck. So why this is so great is because if you think about all of the strongest decks in this game, so Cash Tira having a Rise Heart and all of their cards are level 7 above, then you've got Purely, so X Purely Noir, um, level 7 and above, and then Labyrinth, level 8 and above, level 9 as well, I think, I'm not too sure. They can't activate their effects. That is insane. They can't declare attacks. So they won't be able to destroy this card in response either. So they'll they have to rely on cards like Harpy's Feather Duster just to out this card or Cosmic Cyclone. So I do think it's really, really good that the cards like this exist. And I'm thinking about opting it in for deck lockdown if I find deck lockdown isn't doing too well. But based on how games are going so far, this game is this card is pretty amazing. So I'm quite pleased with it. And I'm pretty sure so if I go purely quick. Oh, I've misspelled it, that's why. So if I go purely, very quickly. This is also level 7, so their OTK line is completely gone. They have to... Oh no, it's not. What am I talking about? Is this the OTK line? I'm actually not sure. Either this one's the OTK or this one's the OTK. I think it might be this one. I'm not too sure. Like, I'm not a purely player, so clearly I, I don't know, as you can see. But either way, I do think this card ha plays a lot of value. It just depends on what you play the most. If you find you're only playing Cash Tiro, which is quite likely in the second round, then yeah, this card might actually play some really good value on you. Because uh, basically, Fenrir will not be able to banish it either on attack declaration. So you're in a really good spot. Now for Baguska, oh, I love this card. So this card is great within Link decks because Link monsters not being able to go to defense position can still activate their effects. They're not negated in any sense. So essentially this card is skill drained, but only for your, well, no. Well, yeah, only for your opponent if you only play Link cards. Obviously, if you play like Circular and try and trigger Circular on, well, from, you know, another math met entering the board, then yeah, it won't work because Baguska on the field. But the only problem with um, summoning Baguska is a lot of the Cyburst cards lock you into Cyburst. So I do find that quite frustrating. I'm waiting for the Spirit package to come out. So Sakitama. If Sakitama comes out, I will definitely play uh, Baguska because this is really good against every deck. Like I can't name a deck that wouldn't suffer under, you know, Baguska because uh, essentially, um, sorry, going from deck list to deck list. So essentially Cash Tira would suffer. You know, none of their cards will be able to search, nor will they be able to banish. Uh, purely not able to search nor are they able to exe summon and then you know uh, labyrinth not able to destroy anything on summon or you know find cards set cards sorry set traps from their deck to the to the field it, like the list goes on really like oh what, what's the name um the only thing that could out it is probably like from dragon link if dragon with dragon link if they manage to get drew swim on the board and then tribute it they can get rid of uh, Tapir. And then there's another Link monster that I think is commonly played. So if I look at, I think it's a Link monster with 2300 attack. I think it's level, th oh, no, level two. And I believe I have it. It's a rare one. I'm just gonna take one, yeah, here it is, straight away. Okay, I'm glad I found it quickly because I don't wanna spend too much time on it. So look, it only requires two effect monsters and it's commonly played because look, 2300 attack versus 2000 defense. This is quite a high defense against like some basic monsters, so it is a really good card. This also just buys you time if you don't have the natural cards yourself. So I do appreciate like how this works. So yeah, Baguska is something that I will be putting in the future. I'm just waiting for the Sakitama Spirit Package to come out. And sag, I, I think, I think I'm just going to take this out to be honest, because when I think about the conditions to actually have this card work well, like it's a, it's an OTK option for Dinos. It's fantastic for them, and I I really really love that deck. It's so interesting and. I do appreciate a rogue deck, so I might even play that in a future game state. But right now, I don't think this card would actually be activatable in the Mathmech line. H essentially, what I wanted is for it to be linked with um, Terahertz underneath, or even access code, so I could attack defense position monsters and have, you know, that game lethal damage. But to have this work would require ridiculous steps. So I think I'm going to leave it there. But look, if you got this far, so thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, the support if you liked um anything or learned anything within this you know video like feel free to shoot me a like it really tells me if that you enjoyed the video at least and if you have any questions just shoot them in the comments below so thank you so much for watching take care bye